For more than 50 years, the story of human progress has been written in silicon. The microchip, perhaps the most important invention of the modern age, has grown smaller, faster, and more powerful with each passing generation. At the heart of that evolution lies a simple idea. Shrink the transistors, increase the performance. That principle, popularized as Moore's Law, has powered the rise of everything from personal computers and smartphones to artificial intelligence and supercomputers. But every step forward has also brought us closer to a hard boundary, the atomic limit. And for years, the industry has known that eventually, physics itself would resist further progress. Because at the nanoscale, you are not just building machines. You are negotiating with the laws of the universe. The transistors we use today measure just a few dozen atoms across. At 3 nanometers, already a cutting-edge benchmark, we're operating on a scale where quantum phenomena begin to interfere with engineering. At 2 nanometers, which is projected to arrive commercially within the next year or two, those challenges become even more severe. Leakage currents, electron tunneling, heat dissipation, material instability, these aren't just technical hurdles. They are fundamental problems rooted in the way the universe works, which is why the idea of pushing further to one nanometer has long been seen as an endpoint, a kind of technological event horizon. So when reports began circulating that China had somehow achieved a functioning one nanometer chip, the global tech community was stunned, not just surprised, stunned. Because if true, it would mean someone hadn't just nudged the frontier forward, they had obliterated it. But how? And more importantly, is it even real? To understand the gravity of such a claim, we need to appreciate what one nanometer really means. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter. It's a measurement so small that the human mind struggles to comprehend it. A single strand of DNA is about 2.5 nanometers wide. A red blood cell is roughly 7,000 nanometers across. At one nanometer, you're no longer working with material layers. You're working with individual atoms. You're not just designing circuits. You're orchestrating matter at its most elemental level. At that scale, electrons, those tiny particles that carry electrical signals, begin to behave in unpredictable ways. They can tunnel through barriers. They can leak into adjacent components. They can defy the classical models that engineers have relied on for decades. Silicon, the bedrock material of the semiconductor age, begins to falter. It wasn't made for this. So how could China have done what no other country or corporation has yet achieved? Adding to the intrigue is the fact that China faces significant technological restrictions imposed by Western nations, particularly in access to advanced chip making. The most important of these tools is the Extreme Ultraviolet Lithography Machine, EUV for short, developed by ASML, a Dutch company that holds a near monopoly on the technology. EUV machines are required to print the ultra-fine features found on chips at 7 nanometers and below. But due to export bans and national security concerns, China has been cut off from purchasing these tools. And that's where the mystery deepens. If they truly did create a 1 nanometer chip, they would have had to do so without the very machines the rest of the world considers essential for such a feat. One theory suggests that Chinese engineers may have pushed older deep ultraviolet lithography machines, known as DUV, to their absolute limits, using a technique called multi-patterning. This involves creating complex chip features by layering multiple exposures and aligning them with nanometer precision. It's been done before, but not at this scale. The process is slow, expensive, and prone to errors. It's a technological marvel, but not ideal for high-volume manufacturing. Another possibility is that they've made a leap in material science. Traditional transistors rely on silicon, but alternative materials like graphene or molybdenum disulfide offer tantalizing new properties. These so-called two-dimensional materials are only one atom thick and can potentially overcome the limitations of silicon at the quantum scale. If China has figured out how to build functioning transistors using these materials, then the one nanometer claim could be more than plausible. It could be revolutionary. There's also speculation that we're not talking about conventional chip design at all. Some experts believe that China may be developing entirely new transistor architectures, perhaps inspired by quantum computing or neuromorphic design, that bypass the bottlenecks of traditional silicon scaling. These architectures wouldn't just be smaller. They'd be fundamentally different in how they process and move information. But for every theory, there's an equally compelling reason to doubt. The world of advanced semiconductors is shrouded in secrecy, nationalism, and corporate rivalry. And in this environment, 
Information is often used as a tool, not just for clarity, but for strategy. It's entirely possible that the one nanometer announcement is not a demonstration of real-world capability, but a psychological maneuver designed to disrupt and influence. A carefully placed signal. A flex. A geopolitical move. Some believe the claim refers only to a laboratory prototype, a one-off proof-of-concept device that proves feasibility, but not scalability. Others point to semantic ambiguity. In the semiconductor industry, process node names like 5 nme 3 nemers or 1 nemers are often more about branding than physics. What one company calls 5M might be closer in performance to another's 7M. China's so-called 1NM chip might not reflect actual transistor dimensions, but rather a specific metric or internal classification. Without standardized definitions, it becomes difficult to verify or debunk such a claim. And verification is the crux of the matter. As of now, no third party has confirmed the existence or performance of a Chinese one nanometer chip. There's been no teardown, no review, no independent benchmarking. That absence of transparency naturally fuels skepticism. In science, claims require evidence. And extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Still, there's a deeper truth worth acknowledging here. Whether the one nanometer breakthrough is real or exaggerated, China's progress in semiconductor development is unmistakable. Despite sanctions, trade barriers, and supply chain bottlenecks, China has made meaningful advances. Companies like SMIC have manufactured 14 e style 12 nanometers and reportedly 5 nanometer chips. Technology is still relevant for AI, telecommunications, and industrial applications. More importantly, China is investing heavily in building a fully independent semiconductor ecosystem. That means not just chip design and fabrication, but also chip design software, wafer equipment, material science, and packaging technology. The long-term ambition is not just to match the West, it's to become immune to it. And that, perhaps, is the real story. Because in this new era of technological competition, the race is no longer just about size or speed. It's about control. The ability to design, produce, and deploy advanced semiconductors is now a matter of national security. It affects everything. AI development, military systems, space exploration, cybersecurity, biotechnology, and global economic resilience. Whoever leads in chips leads in everything else. So even if China hasn't reached one nanometer yet, the fact that such a claim is even being taken seriously says something profound. It means the race is tightening. It means that the world's monopoly on cutting-edge innovation is beginning to fracture. And it means the global balance of technological power is in flux. We are entering a new chapter, one where transparency is scarce, stakes are higher, and the pace of change has never been faster. Did China break physics? Maybe. Or maybe it's just one more move in a long, strategic game of information, perception, and power. Either way, the race for semiconductor supremacy is no longer theoretical. It's happening. And its outcome will shape the future of computing and of global leadership for decades to come. What do you believe? Is this a true leap beyond the known boundaries of science? Or a carefully orchestrated moment in a global battle for influence? In the end, the answer may not be clear today. But what is certain is this. The world of microchips just got a lot more interesting and a lot more uncertain. And that makes it one of the most important stories of our time.